Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Thursday, September 2nd. 2020. My name is Rich, and joining me once again is my good friend Bajan. How are you making out? Woo! We are back, my man! Hello to everyone. I am sorry for blowing out your speakers, but wow! What? How could this be? We are back, man! And it feels good. It feels great. Rich, you beautiful, bearded man! It is so lovely to hear your voice once again. It feels really good to be back. This feels natural. It feels right. Right. Like as much as 2020 has grabbed us by the ankles and turned us upside down. It is good to be here (laughs) in many ways. (laughs) Yeah. But dude, I mean, hey, it is what it is, though. I I shouldn't say that, actually, for many reasons. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody took over that phrase. Start making up a a list. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But but for real, man, I mean, this has been like a crummy year in many ways. But hey, we're going to get through it, and at the end of the day, A&W is back to give some light to us, to make us feel good about ourselves again. And hey, like this this special that we're going to cover today, it was filmed last year, and it was so weird because I'm like, dude, I don't remember that. Oh my gosh, I, I finally remember that and everything. But hey, it's really cool. Like, what are your thoughts on rewatching A and W? It coming back in the world in the limelight and just being back on it, my man. It is a breath of fresh air. Like I, I forgot. I don't know how I forgot. Right, we've been doing this for a few years. I loved the show before that. I just forgot how good it makes you feel. Right, you see the camaraderie. You see, it's just nothing but good vibes. And I'm so, so happy to have it back in our lives. Yeah, man. And we need those good vibes. I I don't know. It's 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 wonderful. I it, it was so infectious, like seeing like how much fun it was. And once again, just the AW community being so supportive and loving and all that. I don't know, man. It was awesome. Yeah, and speaking of that, we should address the fact that, you know, we are back, uh, even though we had said goodbye. Uh part of our coming back, I feel, is you know to jo- to rejoin the community and just to have a good time and to to celebrate the show um but i, I do want to set expectations we're not going to do it the old school way um very very busy time for both bijan and i um and we just want to make it chill we just want to talk about the episode what we enjoyed and not kind of go through the every little detail the way we kind of have in the past yeah, I mean, hey, both of us have very busy jobs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our lives are quite busy. Um, but not only that, I mean, it's one of those things where poor Rich over here would spend hours upon hours. It was insane how many hours this crazy guy <laughs> spent editing each video or, or episode. So it's going to be a lot more chill. I'm like, yo, if we're doing this, let's do it right. Let's chill out. Let's have some fun with it. You know, not go over all the minute details. And hey, we're going to be here. Um, I don't know. Up to you, Rich. You want to do this all season? I think we should. I think we should be all right. here. Hey, there it is, guys. So we're going to do this all season. Throughout the season, we're going to be you know, covering A&W. This time, we're going to do it like all the other podcasts, taking a break, because that's the only way Rich is getting me back. <laughs> man, I need, I need a break. <laughs> yeah, I was very but, excited you agreed to come back, though, I have to say. I wouldn't have done it without you. I am so glad you agreed to come. Yeah, man. I mean, hey, I, I love A and W. This is a thing, and I miss everyone listening. Um, so hey, let's just have some fun, guys. Let's let's do this. All right. So, uh, we're talking All Star Skills Challenge from last year, and they mixed a few things up, right? Like I think right off the bat, the team competition being broken up across the episode. What did you think of that? I mean, it was weird because I was like, oh, we're we're skipping back and forth. But I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the vibe of it because, I mean, Rich, if you remember back to the previous ones, it was kind of like having two episodes where the first half was the All-Stars competition and the second half was like a completely different episode with the skills. And I don't know. It kind of felt like very long after a while, it, at least in my sense, because I felt like the the competition at the for the first hour was like its own thing and then i was kind of like over it i was like oh man that was such an adrenaline high and then you get that dump and then i'm like it's cool watching the skills but 
man, I already watched like a full on hour of something. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I thought the pacing, it, it kind of felt a little bit better. And honestly, it, I don't know. It's fun mixing it all up like that. How do you feel? I thought it was a great change. I loved it for exactly the reasons you said. It dragged some in previous years. Uh, not that, the, you know, it was always fine, but you would kind of feel like when it kicked into the second half of the episode, like, right, we're halfway now. Whereas this, I didn't feel that at all. I felt like it was a great mix and match. You kind of, it made me more interested in the team challenge than I have been in the past years, right? So the team one could kind of drag, I felt a little bit. So by the time you get to the end of stage three, you maybe weren't as excited. Where when you jump to the skills, you get to see some cool stuff. And then we go back to the team thing. And I just, I liked that dynamic. I liked the bouncing back and forth. I thought it was, I hope they keep it year after year. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, because um, let's be real, the team challenge kind of sucks. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it can. It's kind, like, it, it's fine in its own sense, but compared to the skills, like, bro, there is one clearly better than the other in terms of entertainment value. Or at least in my opinion. Like, the, dude, that Daniel Gill, like, thing where the, with the blindfold, <laughs> like, yo, but, but, but you can see my teeth struggling, and, and Daniel Gill's all struggling, like, trying to find it. Like, that was highlight and like level entertainment like the team challenge has nothing on that kind of stuff so yeah i mean in my opinion mixing it up and like getting us through the team challenge with like all these highlights of the skill challenges it's awesome man yeah yeah uh so let's i do want to put a little bit of order to it just so we can kind of keep it all straight and we cover everything a little bit so the team competition let, let's just cover that as a whole we don't have to kind of go back and forth like they did in the episode for us yeah yeah um what did you think of the teams? I guess Let, let's cover that. So team Akbar, Man. Jake, Grant, and Alyssa team, Matt, Carson, Ryan, and Michelle and team Zuri was cake ninja, Seth Rogers, and Maddie Howard. So first of all, cake ninja, um, instantly triggered. Like I, <laughs> right. You're like right I back totally forgot it. about this. And I was like, Oh heck no. I, <laughs> Oh, Ooh, I was I was I was so upset to hear cake ninja. Them showing me stupid cakes and all that. Oh man. Just triggering immediately. But you know, getting over with all that, I mean, first off, Zuri, highlight of this episode. She is so awesome, man. I, I really feel like she just embraced all of it. She's just so fun. She really, like, just, I don't know, in, in my opinion, she's got, like, such a great vibe. And the fact that, you know, dude, we had some, like, I forgot who, but somebody was, like, dabbing. Like, some really cringeworthy stuff. And I'm like, oh, God. But... Yo, Zuri, she saved it because she's like telling her team, no, do this like cool dance thing that they got. Like she's got some swag to her. So like straight up top notch Zuri Hall, like one of the best additions to the show, bar none. And um, I don't know. I like the fact that we that her team had some fresh new ninjas like uh, Big Red and everything. It, it was cool having some fresh new faces. And I don't know, the, the biggest thing for me, other than all that was just honestly remembering the obstacles. Like, man, <laughs> I saw these yeah. obstacles. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Um, but, yeah, for, for me, it was like seeing the team competition. I really don't care about the stakes or anything. So for me, it's more about enjoying these ninjas, trying to do these obstacles again, getting reintroduced to them, um, stuff like that. What were your thoughts? Uh, I like some of the little individual moments. Like, I, I did like... I like seeing Ryan Stratus do the cliffhanger. I think that's kind of a nice moment to have, right? Those things are cool. Um, Zuri absolutely was the highlight of the whole thing. I I can't argue that at all. Totally loved her. Um, The fact that they highlighted her when they hit the buzzer, I agree with it completely, right? She did steal the show. Um, The only thing I want to call out besides that, the only real highlight of the competition for me uh, was... um, Oh my God, I'm already forgetting names. Grant McCartney, almost swimming the entire mm-hmm. length of the water walls. Like, what the heck was that? That was amazing. I loved it. That totally sucked me in for that. That, that was pretty impressive, especially after like seeing so many people struggle on it. Like, if there's one thing I do remember from last year, it's like how much those water walls were, uh, were quite a problem for people. So that was impressive. All right, team competition done. Let's move on. Let's move on to the yeah. good stuff. <laughs> Let's get into the to the fun. <laughs> so they had the mentors versus the students on the Ferris wheels. Uh, Dave Cavanaugh versus Lucas Reale, and Matisse versus Daniel Gill blindfolded. Dude, the blindfolds. I mean, like, 
Uh, oh. That was so fun. First of all, I was I was like screaming inside. Like I can't imagine how much pain they must have been in, <laughs> bro. Like how long were they up they, there? They said it was like two minutes that Daniel was That's, up there. Like guys, think about just trying to do a dead hang for two minutes. And then think about how high up they were in terms of like the gravity pull on them and the fact that they were holding on to ledges and pulling themselves up. Like the lactic acid build in their forearms. I I can't even believe they lasted as long as they did. Especially Daniel Gill. Like holy crap, man. Because he was doing the, like basically he spent half his time doing a one arm lock off if you think about it. Because he was like jumping out and like waving his arms out. And like all that weight differential on that arm, like his left arm <laughs> must have been done. And those handles move, right? Like I, yeah. you're the expert on that, but I would assume with it moving, that's going to wear you out even quicker, right? Oh, big time. I mean, anything that changes like the 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 shift in terms of like weight, like there's a reason why at the gym everybody says don't use the machines, use the free weights because you're going to get a much better workout. It's because, you know, all that minutia in terms of movement and everything like that, that's what really builds up your muscles. So think about what just him wearing down having to change all of the different like miniature muscle groups in his forearm to hold himself up. Like, that was insane. So, with this whole thing going on, did you figure uh, that Kavanaugh was going to take it in the end as he did? I mean, come on, man. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm more impressed by the fact that Daniel Gill, like, you know, stuck in there against him. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, somebody go run a marathon and the other person run a half marathon. And then afterwards, you know, those two people... I don't know, run something else. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. one person is clearly going to be more worn out than the other. That was yeah, a it made it a pretty fair match. Whatever. It, <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. I mean, in the end, it, it made it for a close race. Like it really was still pretty close between them. Um, it was yeah, fine. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, no dis- discredit to Brett Kavanaugh. Maybe he would have won either way, but yo, it, at the end of the day, that was pure entertainment. And for me, that that's all matters. Dude, that blindfold thing was so dope. Props yeah. to them for thinking of that because that is some great A creativity and that made for some great television. The only thing that would have been better, man, is if like Brett Kavanaugh would have like leaned in and be like, yo, let's do this. Let's both do the uh the blindfold. Because if you think about it, the odds would have been even due to the fact that Daniel Gill has the experience factor, so he knows how to like, you know, grab for the next for the next peg or something, but Gre- Brett Kavanaugh has a little bit fresher arms. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I actually wondered if that would play a factor, right? Um, what about next year? Like ink weights and stuff? Like <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, just, we'll get, uh, we'll get people hanging off each other's backs as they do it. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Oh man. Uh, jumping ahead a little bit there, but the, uh, no, it was pretty good. I, I really liked, I liked the Ferris wheels as an obstacle. I, when it was on the, uh, the regular season. So I was I really excited to see it here. I think that's a really great fit, a great competition to have. Yeah. I mean the first, the first run, it was kind of okay for me. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was there, but really the blindfold for me really, really made it special. All right. Uh, moving on <laughs> striding steps with, of all people, Chad Flexington on the course. <laughs> Flexington made this. I mean, for me, the striding slabs, steps, I don't know about you, man. I just, maybe I'm a curmudgeon. I didn't really care for it this year. <laughs> I was like, whatever. But it was more of the characters involved with the competition that made it fun for me. And Flexington, I mean, at first I was kind of annoyed, like, uh, what is this guy doing? But then I just fell in love with him. Like, if you're going to go in, go all the way and then some. And this dude did it. And I appreciate that. Yeah, I can see. I can see. I why people might not care for that character. Right there was a lot of pushback when when the uh, the regular season when we talked him up because we both enjoyed him a lot. Um, there are some people that did not. Right, and, and if it just if it rubbed you the wrong way, that that makes sense. I, I yeah, I, I totally you. understand. I mean, I watch at the beginning. I was like, oh, uh, like <laughs> right. I already was getting annoyed because it's over the top. But I mean, it's one of those things where you just have to decide you this is either for you or not you know <laughs> and he went so he went so far like ridiculous i was like all right buddy you win <laughs> yeah him uh so i really thought overall they did a great job pairing people up in this particular event but overall 
picking the right people to run these competitions. They got it really spread out among a lot of ninjas. Um, they paired people off in interesting ways that made it more memorable. There was more at stake. Um, yeah, Barclay stock. It was oh, what's what's this guy's name? That's like super tall. Jody Avila. Yeah, Jody Avila. Like that was cool at the beginning because it was more of just a curiosity thing. Yeah. Like she has a lower center of gravity, but he's got really long strides. Blah blah blah. You know. Um, I mean, looking back, it's pretty obvious who would win. But I mean, hey, you don't know until you see it. <laughs> exactly. And, you, can't, you can't really call that one. I actually, I thought he was gonna fall. Like, I really thought Jody, because he's so tall and balance obstacles yeah. can be so tricky in that way. We saw the Towers of Power struggle a bit. Oh, see, that was a low light episode for me. Yeah, I, I knew it would be. I <laughs> knew. Another trigger was the bro <laughs> stuff. Yo, that needs to go. And the like, whole shirt thing. I, the uh... shirt. Like, it's it's something where it, it was almost, I don't want to go that far, but it was almost like a toxic masculinity. And I don't yeah. want to put that on them. They're super nice. They're awesome. I yeah. don't, you know, I'm not calling them anything. But I'm just saying, like, really, the big the big bad thing is you have to wear some tight, dumb little shirt i was like get get out of here okay like i've watched people put on their beards their beautiful epic beards on the line stuff like that i don't <laughs> i don't care about somebody watching wearing some stupid shirt it was lame if you're gonna make it fun make it fun guys blindfold yourselves do something but yeah it was whatever but yeah the bros I could, need to go <laughs> i don't think that was a good choice for the and i agree i i think that they're great i think that there's nothing wrong i i think their heart was in the right place i think it should have been something different. It does borderline on, on that. It's it's definitely not like it's definitely not toxic, but it's just enough where it's like eh, it doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, I, I think it's because of the characters of using the terms bro. Yeah, and, you know all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Once it's again, the not trying to go there or call people out like that. I'm just saying, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think something better. I don't know, just something si- like something silly to wear on the sidelines. Fine, like a dunce cap or a like like a shirt that's said whatever yeah or the honestly fallen tower me, or something i don't know what again, you would put yeah i i say go all the way like put them in tutus some rubber duck flip like foot thingies or something like that and i have them like run the whole thing on those you know do things that will like hinder them and just make it funny that's better in my opinion yeah the, i this whole episode i feel like they they're really leaning <laughs> into the less of a it's not that it's not a competition because it is they're certainly competitive but it's definitely about them having fun yeah i think it's and i think this might be the way to do it is highlighting the personalities and the characters because if you look back the all-star competition i mean correct me if i'm wrong but it's it's here this is the usa versus the world usually airs right before the new season and i think it's these and i think it's a great way of highlighting and reintroducing everyone to the characters of American Ninja Warrior. Because at this point, I, I mean, characters might not be the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Like, the people that you're familiar with and the obstacles and just the funness of a and At the end of the day, it's a competition, but really, like, really it's about the fun. Right. Um, Jesse Labreck and Chris DeGange running for the laundry service for six months. Eh. I thought it was me, I mean, and but then I thought, you know what? And I was, I was curious. I, w- I wanted to just hang that out there to see what your quick reaction was, because that's the type of thing that you and your uh, fiance would do. Oh, instantly, yeah, totally. But you know, uh, first off, I would have a name other than you know, like I wouldn't be Sarah's fiance, like you know, um, the Brex husband. I think at this point is just the Brex husband. I mean, the poor guy doesn't even have a name, right. so it, it's. <laughs> It's unfortunate, but, you know, he did win, so good on him. But, uh, you know, he's got to do more than that to get a name. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then Flexington won, which I would not have guessed in a million years. Oh, I loved it. And he, he (laughs) I think he was surprised also. And he, he hammed it up. He was flexing. He was so happy. I loved it. I was so happy for the guy. It was pretty cool. And I liked that they gave him a medal with his, uh, with the red, white, and blue. I thought that was cute. Yeah. And honestly, it's kind of cool to see somebody new, like, win these comp- – like, if you want to go on the competition aspect of it, it's nice seeing a fresh face actually winning the whole thing. Really, I, I kind of noticed, like, right across the board, the winners were the ones that I do I wouldn't have picked. Right? It is those lesser oh. – like, it's Kavanaugh yeah, that's wins. that's a good point. Flexington wins. Torres <laughs> wins. It's like, all right, I'll go with that. Yeah. And honestly, after seeing uh, – <laughs> 
Uh-oh. You know what? We'll get there. But I, I'll just say is the first Jesse Graft thing, like, Splash did not give me high hopes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we've got the giant spider climb still. Uh, they built it up as a Chicago versus Atlanta thing. Uh, that was all right. It wasn't it, great, but it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I... I I <laughs> I kind of overlooked it. I was like, all right, let's move on. And I I feel like they kind of were like that also. So that's fine. Yeah, I was pretty. I mean, it was impressive how fast they were going. Uh, especially if they kept beating the the times, get it down to sixteen seconds. I think it was. That yeah, was crazy fast, but mm, a little low on the the energy. I, they try. They certainly tried. They put what they had into it. That you know, doing the whole you know bowing to them before they went and stuff. Like they were they were definitely putting the energy and the. And everything into it so yeah i, I think the that. issue i think the issue is with things like this where it comes to the height or anything like that type of competition is you want to see the struggle you know and these guys went so fast that i'm sure don't get me wrong it was probably not easy <laughs> but i'm just saying um that you didn't see the grit like everybody just trying to get those last final like five meters or anything like that like with the salmon ladder climb you saw it um, like people really squinting and failing and everything like that. And I don't know, like years past where people struggling. I just don't remember rich, <laughs> they did. but so, yeah, I was actually just were, thinking right? that I forgot about that until you started talking about the struggle when the women did it, they did this huge, like round Robin or single elimination or whatever it was. It took like four rounds. And by the end of it, Megan Martin, I think versus Jesse Graf, the two of them, were about ready to just die, right? They had done it like four times and they were just spent. That sounds brutal, man. <laughs> yeah, they, it looked terrible. And I could be wrong on the people or who did it, but I know, I do I can remember seeing Megan just looking like death at the top of that thing. Gosh. I mean, here's the thing. I've tried the spider climb. I could barely do maybe three transitions up, like, which would be like literally like five feet. That's it, guys. Like, it is so hard. I can't, imagine them doing it once let alone four times that is so impressive but i mean as a viewer you know like if if i hadn't tried it i wouldn't know that right so unfortunately as a viewer you need that that sense of drama and it just wasn't there for me so that's kind of just why i was like eh. like they went they went up fast cool yeah and i think that's why aw in general leans into the the upper body obstacles more Right, because with trans with like balance obstacles and things, you tend to fall off quickly. Whereas with you know, if it's grip strength that's giving out, it's gonna take a while. And there's gonna be that drama of can they do it, can they not do it? Yeah. That said, bring back um Ninja versus Ninja, or in my opinion, Team Ninja Warrior. Uh it was so good. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's coming back. I, I think uh A and W Junior is saying <laughs> in in lieu of it, but still. Which is good in its own right, to be fair. Oh, it's wonderful. All right, and I unless I missed some notes, which is entirely possible because I did not take the notes during the whole thing, I believe just the double dipper freestyles left. Did I miss any of the skills I mean, challenges? if you did, it clearly wasn't important enough, buddy. <laughs> so. There we go. It didn't stand out. Double dipper freestyle. Uh, we had Jesse Graff, Grant McCartney, Najee Richardson, and Adam Rail. Yeah, I thought I thought it, like this, this kind of stuff could always be fun, and I appreciated the fact that. Like, first off, Akbar and Zuri, way too forgiving with their scores. I was like, what the heck are you guys doing? At least Matt somewhat was like, all right, I have to be somewhat critical to these people. (laughs) Because I'm like, yo, you did a belly flop. You don't get an eight, okay? Sorry, you don't. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, I I thought it was was pretty... It, it was pretty fun when when the uh, when these characters, athletes, however you want to call them, really played it up. <clears throat> yeah, I think that this competition really stood out. Last year, we saw how much fun it could be with Sean Bryan really like showing everyone up, which completely oh, baffled. Completely. I remember he blew my mind, but what did he do, man? Like I, I forgot. He was imitating all the other competitors, right? He was like oh. doing their shticks and did like an amazing job of like imitating them like it was just so so good and not only that i remember it really brought out his personality because like we we always heard about his personality but he was kind of like just more serious or front late front like front facing or whatever you want to call it like on the television program itself we got to see really a lot of his goofier side and it was it was pretty awesome 
Yeah, I loved it. Um, but this year we got to see more of that from the ones we're more used to seeing it from. Um, some really impressive displays. I I was floored when Grant managed to go through that hoop. Dude. <laughs> that was highlight. perfect. First of all, Grant got robbed, calling it now. But <laughs> that was so dope. That was a perfect 10 where everybody else was getting like fives and stuff. Najee did some really cool stuff also. So props to Najee. But um, yeah, I... I thought that was absolutely amazing. And at first, dude, I was scared. I had a, I, I'm glad they had a replay in slow motion because I'm like, did he just go through like a metal bar hoop? Because like that is so dangerous. <laughs> but I realized after the fact that it was just those little foam, like little Floaty whatever noodles hoop. or whatever. Yeah, the noodle things. Man, I was. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad I realized that after the fact because I got a little worried. That was awesome. That was absolutely brilliant. And that's the creativity I appreciate in a competition like this is that you let the, the ninjas like use just their own creativity and, you know, just go for it. Yeah, I thought the whole thing was good. Um, I really liked uh, Jesse's second dive, especially with the splits and doing the superhero so awesome. pose. That was that, great. See, that was like a good full on nines right there. That was awesome, creative, not as impressive as, you know, like Grant's or Najee's, but it was creative in its own sense, merits, and, you know, she wins for that. Um, still, I don't think she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you want the co- the competitor of me, I'm like, yo, uh, one was clearly better than the other. I'm pretty sure Jesse will agree with that. <laughs> right. I. I hate to say it. I really don't want to put a damper on this whole thing, but I mean, there's, there's some, there's some score fixing going on around there like that. There was so much going on where it was like, really Najee gets a, was a six or a seven from, from Matt keeping him below Grant. Like, yeah. I don't think so. By doing like the million like twists that he did. Like that was so yeah. dope. Right. That was awesome. Yeah. I, I, no, some of that didn't make any sense to me. Some of the scores that were going up and t- it was a little weirdly convenient that they, they had to go again and, Oh, they have to come up with that on the spot. But look at these cool things that they can do off the top of their heads. Like, I don't know. I'm a little, a little <laughs> skeptical on that. Yeah. But I mean, Hey, it, it, whatever. I mean, it, it, it's all in fun. It was entertaining um, and it's for fun. Exactly. And that's the only reason I did. I felt like I had to mention it, but you know what? I don't care in the end of the day. It was fun regardless I, I will i will complain i gotta complain quick <clears throat> stop spoiling things oh my god like triggered first episode not even like starting the season yet and you guys are like showing like one of the best dives at the very beginning of the episode and then show it multiple times through that was like jesse's splits dive was spoiled immediately <laughs> like i would have See, loved to have seen that without it being spoiled that's why i watch it on video on demand and just skip all that stuff so i don't get spoiled it's wonderful I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so I don't even know what you're talking about. But yeah, that that would suck if you got spoiled by that. <laughs> I totally did. All those little preambles that they do, like and coming up, and like I should know better. I've how many years have I been doing this? You think I would know better? I used to skip them, and uh, didn't this time. Hey, we're getting back into it, man. You, you'll know better next time. Yes, but, I will. Um, <laughs> hey, how crazy would it would would it have been though? if Grant were to have made it through the little circle in that second attempt, because <laughs> yeah. dude, he had some really good form on all that. Like Grant that like he, he won that competition. That was impressive stuff. Even without getting in the, in the little circle thingy, that was dope. Yeah. I guess he's, he was uh, a diver. So it makes some sense. But, oh dude, I forgot about that. That makes that, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They asked Jesse if she had, was a diver she said yeah for two months <laughs> so yeah, like <laughs> the earnestness of her answer it was like yeah I, yeah i was a diver for two months like to her that's that's how long it takes to pick up a skill and move on to learn the next martial art the next crazy athletic ability yeah like the million things that she does yeah yeah um but yeah that was it for the episode and uh thoroughly enjoyed it makes me very excited for the season start yeah, it was fun. So, like, I haven't been reading into it too much, man. Um, do you know, like, for this upcoming season, is this just the things that they filmed in 2020? Or did, like, they have all the ninjas come back, quarantine for a bit, and, like, do a filming? Oh, um, <laughs> I've been so out of the community. But I, I've been, like, dipping my toes in here and there. So I apologize if this is wrong. My understanding is they brought back 
the um a lot some of the major competitors definitely not were any nowhere near what they would normally bring in they filmed mm-hmm. it all in one city um and yeah they did all the responsible things they didn't bring in crowds and everything so yeah it's gonna feel a little different um but this is how they were able to to actually put together like in a bridge season yeah and i'm really glad they did that it sounds like they did all the right things um i i'm i'm, I'm all cool with that i mean at the end of the day they know who their stars are yeah in terms of fairness competition blah 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 guys you 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 can, you got to take what you can get when it comes to these situations so I'm really happy. It sounds like they fit, they found like the best people that we want to see and we can just make a fun season, you know, call it A&W all stars, the season or whatever, you know, um, that's really cool. And honestly, if you remember rich, like when they were filming indoors, you know, in that one, like, <laughs> I forgot where they filmed, but you remember what I'm talking about? Like Tacoma, that was pretty I think. cool. Yeah. And Hey, if it's, if it's one of those things where it's like wrestling right now, where they basically have all the competitors basically as a crowd, I think that could be really fun. Yeah. Are they going to like all the sports had to do something, right? We've got no crowds and all these different things. They have fake crowd noise pumped in. Um, yeah. Which they Man, do anyway. Watched... They do that anyway. So, I mean, what's yeah. the difference? <laughs> yeah. But I, yo, I watched a baseball game on television just from curiosity. That was rough, bro. <laughs> Like, they've got like I'm little sorry, cut, cutouts but... for baseball don't they they have like little yeah they got like screens i i i didn't i'm trying to remember what they did with the they did something for the for for the audience like the first few rows behind the the mound and everything but just the co- <laughs> the sound was <laughs> that was pretty jarring <laughs> yeah i've been getting my uh my field playing nhl 20 on the ps4 so anybody wants to nice. play hit me up uh all right so that is it for this episode i'm so glad to be talking to you again Vijan, and so glad to be talking to all of you um, yay i'm glad to talk to you too my man thank you all so much for listening if you'd like to reach out to me you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com i am at ninja podcast on both instagram and twitter Bijan, how can they reach you hit me up at Bijan 151 that is b-i-j-a-n 151 on Twitter and Instagram. Mostly Instagram, though. I mean, let's be real. I'm not really on Twitter. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But yeah, hit me up. Um, I'm living life. I'm a librarian. I'm getting married next month. Dopeness. First episode back, and you dragged it out of me again. All right. Thank you all so you much know for I listening. Do it. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Peace, love, and deuces, y'all. And the bell is still here. <laughs>